Amen. How are you doing tonight? I'm so happy and excited. Thank you, Pastor Virginia. I love you so much. It's because of this woman obedience that I am up here tonight. More than two years ago when I met her, I was in my uh, worst uh, uh, season of my life. And it requires an obedience of one person to change people's lives. And uh, I'm so grateful for you. So tonight I will be talking about spiritual growth. God has been pressing me a lot in my heart about the importance of the spiritual growth. The reason why, because time to time we go into a spiritual sleep. And we can't afford to sleep spiritual in the season where we're living right now. Right? And God has told me, it's a little bit tough as a word, but I'm going to say that tell to my people to stop playing Christianity and to start acting as one. And that comes with me first. She spoke to me first. So now when I was 15 years old, I gave my life to Jesus. And I did not know anything about it. No, I made any effort whatsoever to get to know him. So there was no change in my life. There was no fruits, tangible fruits in my life whatsoever. And I continued like that for a few years. And I did not care. However, when tough seasons will hit my life, I will go to God and I will complain and cry, but why God? Why me? Why so difficult? Why this and why that? The problem was that I lacked spiritual growth. And as I was going through my life back then, I was just a baby Christian. And because I did not care, the consequences was that I did not have any knowledge, any understanding about the word of God that would be able to sustain me in the time of season that I was in. So what, I, what happened is that I lived in the flesh all the time and I actually pretended that some changes will happen in my life. And that's called insanity. Keep doing the same thing and pretend that something will change. It's called insanity. Now we are here in 2019, at the very end of 2019. And some of you might have uh, expected some changes in 2019. But if you have applied the same lifestyle that you had in 2018 to, into 2019, and now we are at the end of it, and you have seen no changes, and you're kind of discouraged. And you say, but God, why? Let me tell you this. If we live a lifestyle, same, similar lifestyle, or same lifestyle as we lived in the world, as we are here right now, and, if we, and, you, and you pretend that something will change, right? Or if you are one foot in and one foot out as a Christian, and then you are expecting that one beautiful day, Heaven will open up and God will pour out a blessing in such a wonderful way and suddenly your life will change forever. Rest assured, my friends, that never ever will happen. Ever. I'm telling you right now. That will never happen. You know why? Because God is God of surrender. God is God of growth. God is not a genius in the bottle. When God opened my eyes to understand and my heart to understand about the spiritual growth, then I saw fruits in my life. Then I saw changes, sustainable changes in my life. Now, what, what is spiritual growth? The walk with God is an everyday commitment in growing in knowledge about Him, in understanding, in wisdom, in power, and in strength. Spiritual growth is not only everyday commitment, but it's a lifelong journey. Now, the spiritual growth has been detailed in, uh, give me the, please, the scripture of 2 Peter 1, chapter 1, from verse 3 to 8. Let's read this together. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness, through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through this he has given us his very great and pre precious promises. So that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, to goodness knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance. To perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, 
they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what do we see here? First, we increase in the knowledge and understanding about the Word of God, which will help us escape from the corruption of the evil world, right? Which is caused by evil desires that causes us to sin. Now, when we give up all the practices and habits that we picked up in the world, now we pick up new practices and new habits, which, which actually are, which are those? Brotherly kindness, love, gentleness, right, etc. So when we pick up all these practices and all these habits, we, became, we become more like Jesus. So, so to summarize, the spiritual growth is becoming more like him because Jesus Christ is the ultimate example of what it means to live spiritually, to be spiritual. Amen. Now, why do we need spiritual growth? Why is that important? Why do we need that? Spiritual growth is key to our personal growth and is key to our church growth as well as the body of Christ. It's very important. So spiritual growth increases holiness in, the, in our mind, holiness in our heart, and holiness in every area of our lives. As well, spiritual growth will help us stand against every scheme of devil that comes against us in order for us to recognize every false doctrine that he brings against us every single day in order to keep us away from the truth that sets us free so we do not live in the fullness that God has for us. Now, how it is done? How do we grow spiritually? This is very important. I'm going to stay here for a little bit. As I mentioned in the very beginning that the spiritual growth does not happen overnight. You have to understand this is very important. It's everyday commitment and intentionality to walk with God. It's lifelong journey. Now let's... Uh, the spiritual growth occurs, first and foremost, is very important. Occurs when you read and you apply the word of God into your life. Let's read from the, in the first Peter chapter 2, verse 2. God says here, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So what does that mean? This means that we have to take, what is the pure milk, milk of the word? It's this one. It's called Bible. It's the word of God. We have to desire and take this word of God every single day as a nourishment of our spirit, of our soul. Now, let me give you this example. We have a body, right? Every day this body requires food. Now, what happens if I leave this body without eating? I become weak. I have problems in focusing and concentrating, right? I'll be moody and I'll be, nobody will want to be around me. Now, imagine if I leave this body without eating for extended period of time. What happens? I'll die. Exactly. I'm going to die, right? Now, this is very important to understand, and I'm going to stay here for a little bit because I really want you to understand this. In, in uh, th uh, my scripture, Thessalonians 1, 5, 23. God is speaking here about... God has made us in three parts, body, spirit, and soul. Now, body is the, the, the our physical body interacts with the, with, the, with the material world. And it's made of five senses. It's made of sight, of smell, of taste, of hearing, and of touching. That's how we interact with our, with our everyday material world. God has made us as a spirit as well. A part of us is a spirit, our inner person, which interacts with God. Help us to interact with God. And God has made us as well with a soul. Soul, it contains our will, our feelings, and our emotion and plays at the command center of our body. Now, when Adam and Eve fall into sin, really, I really want you to understand this. When Adam and Eve fall into sin, the spirit of the human being died because we fall into sin. Now, what happened? Human being did not die because body did not die because the soul remained. 
Now, automatically, the soul got attached to the body and followed the body. Now, because the body was already corrupted by the sin. Now, when the body is corrupted by the sin, the soul get attached to the body, the soul will follow the body, will follow the flesh. Now, Paul, when, when our body is corrupted by the sin because of the first fallen of Adam and Eve, Paul calls that as flesh. Now, when we, as a, as a, as a, uh, 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 when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior in our life for the very first time, what happens? The Spirit of God immediately, we accept Jesus, Spirit of God will revive our spirit that has been dead because of the fallen of Adam and, and Eve, because of their sin, will revive our spirit, and our spirit becomes alive right at that moment. So now we have the flesh, this is the soul, right? And we have the spirit. Now, every day we choose which one to feed. We feed the flesh or we feed the spirit. Now, what is the food of the flesh? I'm not talking about uh, pancakes and, 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 and waffles and chicken. So, talking about that. So, what is the food of the flesh? How do we feed the flesh every day? Our default system wants to feed the flesh every day because that's what we got used to it, right? So, how do we feed it? We feed our fears. We feed our anxieties. We feed our addictions. We feed our insecurities. We feed our anger, our unforgiveness every single day because that's our default system. Now, when we feed those things, we make our flesh so strong that automatically the soul will follow the flesh. So now what happens is that our will, which is our mind, right, our feelings and our emotion is going to follow the flesh. Now, what is the first battlefield that we have in our life that Satan comes and hit us? Is our mind, right? That's why God in the scripture says, like, meditate on my word day and night and do not let it depart out of your mouth. That's very important. And he says, renew your mind every day. God was not stupid when he, when he wrote this. Day and night. He wrote this because he knows how important the mind is. Satan will come with a thought. If you entertain that thought long enough, what happens is that that thought is going to affect your heart, it's going to affect your feelings and your emotion, and emotion turns into action, and that's when we sin. Now, when we feed that flesh so much, now the mind and the emotions and feelings are going to act upon it, and then we will sin because we are too weak. And we starve the spirit. Now, what is the food of the spirit? What is the food of the spirit? Bible. This is the food of the spirit. This book is one of the most important things that you have in your life. This book has to be treated as a treasure of your life. Without this book, you will not be able to survive not even half a day as a Christian. Because in this book, you have all the truth that will set you free. And you will say, Ariona, how can this book, how can this book change my life? Let's go to John. John 1, from 1 to 3. And 14, verse 14, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. And verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. My goodness. And, he be, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, what was the Word became flesh and dwelt among us? Who was that? Jesus. So that means the word, he was the word. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. That means if Jesus is alive, this word is alive because Jesus is the word. That means it's a living water. That means this word cannot be treated as, as a story book. You read it and you go like, yay, David killed Goliath with a piece of stone. Yay, beautiful story. Daniel was saved in the, in the den of lions. Yay, beautiful story. No, this book has been treated as your life. This is the living water for everything that you need in your life is found in this book. You have a, you have a question, the answer is here. You have a need, the answer is here. You need healing, the answer is here. You need peace, the answer is here. You need joy, the answer is here. Everything you need is found on this book. And there is no other choice, there is, there is no other way, shortcuts that we can achieve all those blessings in our life except going through this book. And we cannot lose to, we, we cannot afford to lose focus from this book. I was driving one day from my home to work, to come to work. And as I was driving, I was in the, 
uh, the, there was a lot of traffic and we started slowing down, right? As we started slowing down, uh, I just checked my phone. My phone is not here. I just checked it for like a few seconds. And just a few seconds. And when I put my eyes on the steering wheels, I saw that all the cars were stopped right in front of me. And I almost hit the person, the car, the car in front of me. Praise God that I didn't. It took me seconds to hit that guy or the girl, whoever it was. It took me seconds. Now, what do I want to say by that? God spoke to me immediately after it. That's how the walk with me is. When you take your eyes off of me, you will crash. Now, we said just before that Jesus is the word. When we take our eyes off the word, we will crash. When we take our eyes off the word, we will crash. What, what kind of crash is a spiritual crash? What kind of crash is, is it talking about? We will crash in depression. We will crash in anxiety. We will crash in suicidal thoughts. We will crash in addiction. We will crash in, 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 in lies and in and, 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 and everything that Satan prepares for us because it's like a roaring lion just waiting for you to open the door to come kill, steal, and destroy for you. But we cannot afford this. We cannot afford to lose focus from this Bible, not even half a day. Because you will crash. And when we crash, we hurt. And when we hurt, we not only influence ourselves, but we affect others around us. Because hurt people hurt people. And God has called us to be influencers. In order to be influencers, what kind of influencers we want to be? Influencers of, of, of Christians like walking like, oh my God, life is so difficult. And you know, like why it always has to happen to me. And and like, like, like headless chicken left and right, we don't know what to do. A problem will hit us and we will be like, oh my God, why me? And why me? And all the time complaining. And why me? And why me? Because we don't know the truth. My people die because lack of knowledge, says the Lord. Because we don't know the truth. This truth is keeping us alive. This truth keeping us sane every day. When something hits into our life, when we know the answer, we don't go and say to the... We, we don't go and cry to God, oh, God, how big this problem is. I don't know how to afford it. But we go and say to the problem, how big my God is. Because we're already full with the word. We already know the word. And nothing can shake us. Nothing can move us because the truth sustains us. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. So I really want you to... I, I really, really, if, do, if, if you don't get anything out of this tonight, please get this. This word is your best friend. Forever. Forever. One word from this book breaks the walls. One word from this book makes blind see. One word from this book dissolves cancers. One word from this book raises the dead. One word from this book casts out demons. One word from this book changes your life forever. So please treat this as your biggest treasure. This shouldn't have dust on it. This should be weared out by reading it and studying it and meditating on it and chewing on it and God says meditate on my word day and night and do not let it depart out of the mouth now when you say but Ariona I read this book but I don't believe what the book says that it's going to work for my life that's why God says meditate on my word day and night and do not let it depart out of the mouth now we need faith God has given us a measure of faith to each one of us right now how does the faith come Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? How do you hear the word of God? By speaking it. When you meditate on it, you speak it. When you speak it, you hear it. When you hear it, your faith increases. When the faith increases, when you have that seed of faith in your heart about that word, that's when your breakthrough comes. That's when you receive your miracle. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So the other step, which is very important that I want to talk about, is, the, is cultivate a lifestyle of prayer that helps us to grow spiritually. Hallelujah. 
in the first Peter 3 12 let's read the scripture together for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil prayer is very extremely important in your spiritual growth God loves prayers you know why because God loves fellowship he loves you so much that he wants a personal relationship with you God hates when there is a prayer, like, like five, ten minutes, we go like, uh, uh, um, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking me up. God, I need this, 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 and this. And I pray for that person and this person. Thank you for listening to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I just got to know Astrid, right? That is a beautiful, beautiful woman of God. I got to know her, right? Now, as I know her for the, very, for the very first time, I want to get to know her more. So I'm going to spend more time with her. I'm going to have a coffee. I'm going to have a lunch with her, right? So when we sit down to get to know each other more, what do we do? We talk to each other. So now how awkward would it look if I sit with Astrid and I say, hi, Astrid, and I, and I say how thankful I am for her, and thank you, Astrid, for doing this and that, and Astrid, I need this and this and this and that. It was so great meeting you, Astrid, bye. She doesn't have to say anything. How awkward is that? What kind of relationship is that? Did I get to know her like this? What kind of person she is, her thoughts, her desires. Was there an opportunity for me to get to know her like this? No. That's how God is. Why God needs to be treated differently? Why? Because we don't see him? That's the reason God says, who seeks me will find me. But we are not willing to sit enough with them to seek him until we find him. And it's just a prayer way. He loves to talk to you, but because we do not sit enough, we do not seek him enough and allow him the time to talk to us because he wants to share with us his hard desires he wants to share with us his plan for our life he wants to love on us he wants to cuddle with us he wants to spend time with us because he's god of fellowship and only prayer can take you there and the only way that you will know his heart is by spending time with them because by spending time with her enough I'm going to be loving her personality so much that I'm going to spend more time with her. More I spend time with her, we come to the point that I will just recognize her desire just by looking at her. Just by looking at each other's eyes, we know, we know what we're thinking. Why should it be different with God? Why? Just because we don't see him? He's more real than the, than the astral that I'm looking at her. Because he lives in you. Because he lives in you. But, but the reason is that we starve the flesh. Sorry, that we starve the spirit so much. And we feed the flesh so much. That we make the, 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 that thing that is living within us, which is the spirit of God. We, we, we make that, that powerful thing inside of us to fall asleep. Because the flesh is so powerful and it takes the soul away from us as well. And it makes us live in the miserable life of Christian life, which God has not called us for that. Jesus did not die that we, can live, that we should live miserably. You know that? Jesus did not lie that we should live in poverty. Jesus did not die that we should live in sickness and diseases and we should live in depression and suicidal thoughts. Jesus did not die that you should live like, oh my God, like this is the most horrific life ever happened. Jesus died that you can have a life full of blessings. And everything is found where? Here. Hallelujah. Now the third thing that I want to talk about that helps us to grow spiritually, let's do life together. You can't do life alone as a Christian. You will not survive alone as a Christian. Don't make the house of God as just visiting. Don't be a visitor in the house of God in your own house. Don't be a visitor, just receive and then leave. This is your house. The scripture says those who plant themselves in the house of God will flourish. The only way that you'll be able to grow spiritually is by planting yourself in the house of God. Is by putting, 
God first thing in your life and how do you demonstrate that by your action, by giving, not only receiving and going. Stop being a visitor Christian. Stop being a part-time Christian. Because your life won't change. 2020 will be the same as 2019. As 2018, 2017, nothing will ever change if you do not take that seriously. If you do not put God first in your life, in every area of your life. And then start by making a, a commitment and being faithful to it. Amen? Hallelujah. Let me still, I want to I wanna read a scripture about, about, uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, tw uh, 33. Don't be fooled by those who say such as things for bad company corrupts good character. You need strong Christian friends to do life with. And those friends are not found in the world. They are found in the house of God. Only here you can make this kind of friendship, this kind of fellowship. That you can pray together with. And they can pray for you, keep you accountable. And that's how you will grow spiritually. There is no shortcuts. There is no other way, unfortunately. That's the only way. And it's very important. Elevate Church gives a lot of opportunities to find yourself here in a family. We are not about, let's do this and that. We are about doing life together in unity. Because in unity, in one mind, in one heart, there is power. And in power, there is transformation. In transformation, we can impact cities. We can impact the whole country. Amen? Now, I... Two weeks ago, I just spoke a little bit about surrender, right? It is very important, guys. It is very important that... That... Um, we surrender. Let me say this. That the level of our surrender determines the level, determines the magnitude of our transformation, of our change. Because if I change, everything will change. Because if I change, then I will see the results of what God wants in my life, of how I grew. Now, what are the results of spiritual growth? How can I see that I grew spiritually? The results of spiritual growth are shown in our everyday action, in our everyday life. Not only when we come to church, because it's very easy to come to church and to say like, to say like uh, 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 hi, how are you? Highly favored, blessed and highly favored. How's everything? Great, amazing. And we put this fake smile and these fake faces and like, yay. No, God is not talking about it. God is talking about realness. And that kind of growth, that kind of spiritual growth is not shown here. It's shown outside there. It's shown with your coworkers, with your family members, that you can't stand. <laughs> it's shown in your community. It's shown with those people that give you a hard time every day. They, you can't even pray about them. That's when it's shown when you're grown spiritually. So let's, open, let's, uh, let's go to the scripture of uh, Galatians 5, 22, uh, 23. We can see how the spiritual growth can, can be manifest in our lives. So, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Now, if you are becoming more loving and more kind and more joyful, rest assured that you are genuinely growing spiritually. And these fruits are going to show to you that I am doing something right. If you do not have these fruits in your life, you have to go back to where? And that's where you have to be. To seek your deliverance. That's where you have to seek your transformation. In order to be able to walk in the fruits of the spirit. And in order to be able to grow spiritually. Because only by growing spiritually you will be able to live in the fullness of Christ. 
Amen. I'm going to emphasize, I can't, I can't emphasize it enough, seriously. I cannot emphasize it enough how important it is to surrender to God. How important it is for you to change. Because if you change, everything will change. If your attitudes change, if you walk in this, in this more joyful, more kind, more self-control and more loving. If you walk in this kind of fruits, people around you will see it. And when they see it, they're, they're, they're going to go, I want more of that. How can I obtain that? How can I seek that? Where can I find the kind of joy that is in you? The kind of peace that is in you? Where can I find the kind of positivity that is in you? They will, you will transform those around you and they will come and find Christ through you. You know why? Because they will see Christ in you. What I said in the very beginning. We become more like Christ. And they will see the Christ in you by walking in the fruit of the Spirit. And that comes only as a result of you growing spiritually. But it comes with work and commitment. And you know why God wants us to grow spiritually? It's not only about ourselves and about our life. But there are hundreds and thousands souls that are dying every day out there without knowing. Without knowing the true Jesus. Without knowing the gospel that will set them free. And there is only one way they, they, that they can know it is by us Christians. We sit in churches and we receive information. Information won't bring transformation. Unless we take this information, we go home and we study it. And it's only there we receive a revelation. Because only the revelation will bring transformation. You can't receive revelation unless you take the scripture and you study it and you read it and you meditate on it and you speak it. That's the only way you can receive transformation. And that's the only way that the people around you will see it and they will be saved. Now if we feed the flesh so much, if we feed our flesh so much that I said in the very beginning... If we, if we feed our depression, if we feed our anxieties, if we feed our unforgiveness and bitterness and hate and all of the other things, if we feed it, we are going to be so blinded that we can't see those around us that are dying every day. We just think about our own problems. We just think about our own families. We think about our own issues all the time, 24-7. We think and we think and think and nothing changes because we are not willing to go to the Word because it requires work. You have to die to your comfort zone. It's very comfortable to be here. And we choose that comfort zone. But that's not where God is. God is here. God is in the spirit. Unless you decide to grow in the spirit through the word of God, through prayers and doing life together, nothing will change in your life. A part-time Christian cannot defeat a full-time Satan. Cannot. You'll always be defeated. You'll always be on the floor. You'll always cry. You'll always complain. You will never, ever enjoy the blessings of God. Ever. What is a part-time Christian? You read the Bible once a week. Oh, I did my job. Tick. Oh, I came to church. Tick. I go home. I go out of the church and I do the same thing that I used to do. And I pretend that something will change in my life. Insanity. We are called not only to live for ourselves. The selfishness. Did you see that in the fruits of the spirit? Any selfishness there? Did God speak about selfishness there? Huh? God spoke about love. There is no greater love than giving your life for others, says the scripture. What does that mean? How do I give my life for others? You die to yourself every day. You die to your, to your, to your flesh desires every day. You, you, you kill, you kill the, 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 the addiction. You die to that addiction. You die to that hate. You die to, you die to that unforgiveness. You die to that offense. You die to that bitterness. That, that poison you. That's how you die for somebody else. You know why? Because you say, I'm not doing this only for myself. I'm doing this because, my goodness, there are hundreds of people out there that need what is inside of me. And you know what is inside of you? The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living inside of you. You have the power to raise the dead. You have the power to heal the sick. You have the power to cast out demons. You have the power to do the same thing that Jesus did if you believe in him. But we are not seeing miracles nowadays. We are not walking in the power. You know why? Because we choose to sleep. And that's not fair for those that are dying out there. We 
see it every day and we receive and we become fat Christians. But nothing changes. We have to awaken. It's time to awaken. It's not late. It starts now. Don't wait until 1st of January 2020 making beautiful vision boards. It starts today. It starts now. They can't wait until 2020. They are dying. They are, they, are, they are crying for help. They don't know where to find it. And we walk every day. We go and see left and right people that are dying because we are so focused on our own problem. We took focus out of the scripture. And we are crashing every day in the spirit. I'm begging. I'm pleading. I'm begging. Let's awaken as a church. Let's awaken as a body. It's time to awaken. It's time to take this serious. It's time to surrender and say, God, I give everything of mine to you. I give all that I have to you. I don't want to live for myself anymore. I don't want to satisfy my flesh anymore. I want to starve my flesh and I want to feed the spirit. Because if I feed the spirit, my mind will follow. My soul will follow. Feelings and emotion. I'm not going to feel so miserable anymore. But God, God will satisfy my soul with good things if I seek him. Because the obedience, when you're obedient, the blessings will chase you. Blessed chases the obedience all the time. So I am pleading with all of you, please, enough, enough of walking as, as casual Christians, enough of doing casual things as Christians, when we can do so much more. We are world changers and history makers. Every one of you, God has a divine purpose and plan for all of you here. But that will not be unfolded out there unless we make the decision and we say, God, forgive me, I surrender. Now I surrender. I'm going to live for you. Stop living you lukewarm. That takes you nowhere. It takes you nowhere. It keeps you insane. And I just want to go into a song about surrender. And you know why? I want to make a call for everybody. That includes me. This sermon, it's about me as well. Not only about all, but it's about all of us as a body. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that we have so much potential living within us. And we are living not even a 5% of it. We are not operating not even a 5% of it. Because we are so selfish. And we need to lay that selfishness in the altar. So I want to call each one of you tonight. Like, let's come to the altar as we sing the song of surrender. Just lay down into the altar of God and say, enough, God. I'm surrendering myself to you. Let's surrender to him. Let's do a real surrender. So I want to invite you. Well, you if you are in your place, you want to just sit there and go into your knees right there. But please, this is the time right now to surrender. This is the time right now to really give our life to Jesus. To really start now and say, God, I want to give it to you. My life is yours. It's yours to use it.